Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Incubus today. Playing some Stone Hearth Alpha 7. Fantastic. Release 180. Mines, roads, masons, shepherds. Fantastic. It looks good. The sheep look adorable, although they're much larger than that. And they're much browner. And you don't really see uh, baby sheep. Or at least I haven't seen baby sheep. If you want to know what's in it, like I just said, that's all of it right there. You can pause, take a look. I've not seen all the specific, I've not seen the specific bug fix list, but it's definitely not stability, because it still bugs out. We're going to go on the map that we live streamed, actually not 15 minutes ago, from recording of this video. And we're going to have a little overview of um, all the little add-ons. This is actually better, because the video should be a little bit short. But as you can see, uh, cake, part of the live stream. Here's a delicious cake. Uh, we have a lot of notifications. We've got two traders that want to exchange goods uh, in a certain time period. It's actually pretty good. I think it's just um, mean beds. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to be looking very quickly at all the additions of this update and what I like and dislike about it. Well, first thing, let's check out the UI. We have this slice option. Now, what this does is it, ba it basically slices the part of the world. This is similar to what Timber and Stone does, only it's not constant. It's actually a button base, which is a much better idea, in my opinion. Um, what it does is it will go up a certain level. I'm not too sure why it never goes on 5 or 10. I think they may have done that on purpose just to screw people over, like myself, and notices that. Also, what I don't like is that it goes by 4, uh, by 5, and not by 1. If I could do it so that I can hold control and click it, to change uh, what meter length it is um, by single digits, that would be fantastic. Unfortunately, it does it by five, which is okay. Don't get me wrong. This is something similar problem I have with mining at the moment, but this is all a uh, work in progress, and it's something they'll be uh, adding later on. This is just a sort of showcase to see that it's actually in development, which is pretty fantastic. So I like I like how they've um, added this slice option in there. I think it's really helpful, and also when it comes to the mining, if we go the way down here. You can see there's already um, some mining going on right here. Which you can see above ground. But still nice to look at. Unfortunately, what it does do is I believe it does slice these options. If I were to do this and then go down. If I were down far, farther enough, I wouldn't be able to see. Oh, wow, I can see him, but not when I'm zoomed in. When I'm zoomed out a little bit more, I can. That's interesting. Also, the roofs disappear as well, which is a bit weird. I'd rather no buildings are uh, interacted with all these. <clears throat> That'd be pretty neat. Unless, of course, I go down the entire layer, and then that wouldn't really matter too much. What the hell's this? Oh, it's like a really weird... Okay, I thought it was like a really weird underground area then. <laughs> that would have been fantastic. I thought they were like spiders or something. That'd be very spooky at the same time. Mm. <sighs> Delicious. Right. Let's get rid of the slice option. There's an x-ray option as well, which basically uh, lets you see the entire underground. Now, for some reason, this mode actually lets you keep the houses. But it, it, anything that you've really manipulated uh, with the world, with buildings or any mines you created, will look like they've got some sort of wall around them. I think this just makes for easy navigation. Gives you a dwarf fortress kind of feel. Or any game, like a dungeon keeper as well. This is really fantastic. I like the way they've done this, especially for underground... Manipulation makes your job a little bit easier. And you can also change that to flat or full, which is pretty nice. And I'm not too sure how that works when it comes to the buildings. I tried to build a, uh, something underground, and it just sort of didn't work. They gave up building it. I think it's just because the parameters of the building right now are still being tweaked. I didn't realize I could go left or right by holding this mouse button. It does look like it, it attaches you to trees, though. Yeah, that's really weird. If I go around, it will attach me to this tree, and then I'll stick to it. Anyway... That's interesting. Let's have the game going while we're doing this. The game feels a little bit more unstable as well, I might add. I've bugged, uh, bugged out a little bit more oftenly and randomly than I usually do. I'm not too sure why, because it doesn't come up with anything. It just breaks. So uh, there may be a few cuts here and there. But now we'll go to mining, since it's a pretty good transition. Mining is only done in four squared, basically. So, well, now, now for some reason it's five down when it's connected to this top floor. That makes sense, I suppose. It will just get the top one, and then it will do the rest four. No, it does it five, I think. No, four, yeah. I'm not too sure why this is the case, because I've seen problems when it comes to building on these areas, where basically it can't get the middle one, as you can see. Yeah, I'm not too sure what's going on there. I would like to feel, build a proper length. 
Yeah, okay, he's grabbed the goods. Grab the goods and head for the hills. We're probably being attacked, so I'll just quickly do that. But as you can see, that's a bit awkward. You can tell them to stop mining it or start mining it. Resume suspend and obviously remove the functionalities. That's pretty cool. Hopefully they make that a little bit easier in the future, though. Going in and out of UIs is sometimes a little bit laborious, especially if you want to do very specific mining. But like I said with the slice tool, I would like it if I could maybe hold control and it would give me the four squared option. Or maybe five squared option. That would probably be a little bit better. Actually, three would be better. Oh, there's a little bit of attacking going on down here. Can we move you? No, we can't. So, unfortunately... This person's probably going to die. Our looks from the stream. That's unfortunate. Going to be helped out, though. By um, Hunterton. Which is pretty good to see. Uh, we the, These guys do take damage, I might add. It's just not really being shown. Their regen rate is pretty good, so... That's pretty good. Apparently, Usk was helping out. I didn't see a middle-aged balding guy. You just don't really uh, notice it. But yeah, that's mining for you. Um, it's still pretty good. I like the fact that now you can mine. It's just not as specific as I would perhaps like it to be. I want to create some like cool designs that involve mining. Like a little while ago, some guy manipulated the build tool to make a cool staircase. And uh, that was really cool. So more specific stuff. You can do it specifically, like the staircase thing. It's not difficult. It just takes a little bit more effort. <clears throat> That's all. Oh, yeah, and hopefully you don't crash in the meantime, which would help out. Alpha is alpha, like I said. Now, roads. Roads are pretty cool. Uh, they're basically just floors. So it makes sense, really, isn't it? So we got floors. You can also give a, a nice little trim, which is basically a, just a one-block trim uh, around the road that you create like this. That's pretty cool, actually. How does that manipulate itself around buildings? It doesn't really. How's that work? If I connect that to a previously made road, will that do anything? We'll remove this. And with this road, we'll connect it up and see what happens. No, but it's made a weird underneath version of it. It is connected to that road, but it doesn't manipulate the chisel as it was. As it is. <clears throat> as it were. Is what I was trying to say there. The borders uh, don't actually connect and remove anything that interconnects with our roads is what I was trying to say there. So it's a little bit awkward. I also like if it's a little bit lower. Maybe half blocks and not full blocks with this trim. But anyway, we'll get rid of that. Now the roads have uh, different materials. This one's the primary material. They're both, both stone, I believe. Stone and brick, but I believe brick just uses stone. There you are. That's basically as easy as it is to make a road. It does increase their movement speed, which is pretty great. And if there's a road to go to... Uh, if they can go on a road to get to a certain location, they will go on the road. That's just how they do it. Well, if the road is going to actually be faster. That is, like, if there's a road here, he's not going to go round up to the road and then go to there. He's just going to go around this corner because it's actually quicker to get to, to it on normal ground. And I think they do take speed into effect there, which is pretty great. <clears throat> so I like roads. They're pretty good. Now, the Mason... We're going down the list, basically. The Mason is pretty great. They basically add a bunch of really cool upgrades. Well, a bit really cool materials. So you've got these cobblestone fences that you can see right here. You have a cobblestone lantern, which is really cool. If I can actually place it here, that'd be pretty great. If I can just put it, like, right there. There's also a cobblestone gate that I am uh, failing to plonk down. I did have one previously, but I guess I'll make one again because it's gone somewhere. You've also got some furniture, being the tables, chairs, and benches. Um, we're not using them. We're just using a wooden chairs and tables right now. And they all go to that dining table as well. But I believe that was in previous launches anyway. And then you've got all of this uh, random sort of uh, decor. These are basically light sources, really big ones. That's a really cool uh, brazier right there. If we make one of them, this... I mean, it's a brazier. That's what it is. I've not seen this one. I think it's about the same size as the fireplace by the looks of it. It could be a little bit smaller, though. It does Something tells me it is smaller because it doesn't cost as much to make. So that's probably what... It probably is smaller. There we are. Uh, oh, we did have a... We did have, a, did have another fence, apparently. If we just move this here. Make a cool little fence right there. You can't make a, a road on the front block of the fence. Or the bit there opens up at as well. Up at as well. You've got to make the road first. Which is something I should have done, really. But I guess it's too late now. He's plunked it down. Bill. There we go. I think, I think I've already set it up. Now, the problem is, is that now the road won't go down, I think, because there's... Now the um, the fence gate won't go down because there's a road in construction, apparently. God, that door sounds really nice. 
That's really good. I didn't hear that before. Say it again. Lovely. You can hear like plates in that lot. Well, you could. <laughs> now you can't. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, roads once again. Alpha. It's fantastic though. I'm, I'm really liking the progress. It's a very big jump from uh, previous updates. There's lots of things that have been added right now and lots of concepts that should hopefully be built up in the future. So yeah, that's roads for you. Mason, I've showed you. Roads I've showed you. Money I'll show you. Now the shepherd. Shepherd is interesting because a shepherd requires a level three trapper. So if we go to the trapper menu right here, we change his job. He can now be a shepherd and he is eligible to be a shepherd right here in the requirement requirements menu. If someone else tried to be a shepherd, they cannot be because they're not a level 3 trapper. Unfortunately, this does get rid of the trapper's benefits. <clears throat> but it doesn't get rid of his knife, so you can turn someone else into a trapper once they have turned. We'll make him a shepherd though. So a shepherd's pretty simple right now. Basically, you just sh you just um, set an area similar to a trapper as the shepherd's zone. And then he'll just randomly... Uh, sheep will just randomly spawn within a certain radius of that zone. And he'll go and pick them up. And they'll just follow him around. I'm not too sure how many follow him around before it becomes a bit ridiculous. As you can see, here's a beautiful thing. Now if we just uh, set an area right here. Beautiful. It's good to see. Then sheep should just sort of around. Yep, we got one right here. A nice cuddly little sheep. And you will just get sort of uh, bolts of wool. And uh, look at him. That's fantastic. Look, he's sort of wiggling about a bit. It's really cool to look at though. I like how they've got a, a new animal that roams around. It's a fairly large animal as well. It's good to see something a little bit bigger. I'm interested because uh, the trapper has another ability after his... We just make someone into a trapper. There we are. So if we just go ahead, someone should turn into a trapper, but basically, here we are. I wonder if we can see them turn uh, in the transition. I wonder if everything changes at the same time. It does, nice. So at level five, I believe, uh, tr I believe, traps now lure in and hold larger prey. Now I have to wonder what that is. It's locked anyway, so we can't get it. Oh no, we, just, we, we can get it, it just takes a little while. But I have to wonder what that uh, large prey is defined by, whether the critters just get slightly larger, I'm not too sure. But as you can see, the sheep just sort of follow him around. Uh, every now and then, they'll just get shaved, and they'll be naked for a little while, and then wool will randomly appear. It's a concept, once again. I, I imagine that they'll actually be held up in a pen, or you have to cover that pen with wood uh, fence, I'm not too sure. Or stone fence, it could be anything. Uh, level 1 trap already, that was very quick. <laughs> very, very quick, but the XP is um, basically trebled right there. But they're already 4 XP, they get quite a lot per trap actually. You need to have more than one trapper, I think, to really get the grinding done here. Hell, even more than that. But that's pretty good, actually. One of them drops a lot of pelts. And thank God there's no, like, gore to it. Also, I think they may have added another soundtrack. Something sounds different. This soundtrack doesn't sound different, but there's one in here that I've not heard of before. But that might be just my, um... Oh, run away! Why do you move so slowly? They're killing the sheep! No! So the sheeps do get attacked, which is pretty cool to see. We have our uh, fighter right here, fighting off the enemies. And it, she's not going to be able to do it all by herself, though. But the sheep and the uh, and Cake the Shepherd is just sort of very slowly making his way out of there. What a view. That's um, very strange to look at. <laughs> awesome. And unfortunately, uh, Hunterton right now is taking a beating. Which isn't good. However, the rest of the crew have come on down to um, help her out. So that's pretty good to see. Don't want to take any more damage from these uh, pesky goblins. There we are. Now, I have no idea why the shepherd moves so slowly. It might do with the fact that it would be a bit weird if it moved very quickly with the sheep sort of lagging behind. I'm not too sure. But it, it moves sort of at the same speed as someone that's filled with wool and timber and stone. If anyone... Uh, well, basically, weight still counts with the inventory menu in Timber Stone. So the more you have, the slower you are. And it looks like the same thing is happening right here. Which is unfortunate. I don't think they have inventory menus. So, yeah. Well, they have equipment, but it's not an inventory, really. Well, okay, it is kind of. Maybe it has to do with their strength. Their body is weak, so maybe that does have something to do with the speed. But the thing is, at the Trapper, they were moving fairly quickly. Hmm. 
So I, I'm going to say it doesn't have really much to do with that. But that's about it, I think, ladies and gentlemen. I pretty much showed you um, most of it right now. This is just sort of the live stream build, so they're not really doing too much now. But I have showed you some of the uh, cooler... Oh, that looks really cool. That's a weird stair going on there with that little connection. I can make a cool stair coming from that. That would add it add up really well, actually. That's really cool looking. There is that, ladies and gentlemen. Timber and Stone, Alpha 7. I did do a live stream. Uh, I'll link that in the uh, description below. If you're interested in watching a little bit more of an in-depth review of the game. Before actually giving my full look on Alpha 7. At the moment, I'm very excited. This is a very cool update. They've added pretty much quite a lot. I would say this adds a significant amount of extra hours playing. Because you're just sort of screwing around with the extra options. You're seeing what you can do with the mason. What extra stuff you can make. And other synergies that might work with the houses that involve the masonry. Like fences connecting to it like that in cool ways. There's a lot more customizability than you really think. You just gotta bite down and chew on the random uh, sort of crashes every now and then. But as long as you save every sort of few days, you should be fine with that. Or maybe like every day. But that might be because I was streaming a lot. So I imagine I'm going to blame it on that. Because the game is still pretty stable. Much more stable than it was. So I'm not going to blame that. Uh, the Fog of War still needs to be worked out because it's still a bit weird. The Fog of War never disappears. And I just don't feel like there's much point to it. But at the same time, you know, explored the area. So have it all the time. I don't know. Maybe they can um, change that a little bit. That would be pretty great. If you're wondering what the bug fixes are, I put a link in the description. That should take you to the update page. That should tell you all the information you need to know. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, and subscribe, all that good stuff. I've been the innkeeper. And I shall see you guys next time for some more Timber and Stone. Not Timber and Stone. Stone Herb. <laughs> Listen. I'm going to go record some Tim Zone. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wait till tomorrow. <laughs> Nearly there. That's basically what we're doing. They're very similar games. I get them mixed up. Thank you very much for watching, though, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>